What's up, people? This is Evan from Stock Music Musician, and today I've got a video reviewing the best tape plugins around for your music production needs. In this video, you will get an overview of what these plugins look like. You're going to see what they sound like. We will listen to them both on just kind of a simple Britpop track as, uh, as if they've been on every single channel, and we'll also get to hear what they would sound like on your master bus, if that's approach an approach you want to take for mastering using these uh, plugins. I'll share my views on them. Uh, before we go farther though, I want to let you know what plugins we are showing you. It is Relight. We've got Sketch Cassette 2. We have Type or Tape by Baby Audio. UAD's, oops, UAD's Ampex ATR-102. UAD's Studer A800, Waves's J37, Soft Tubes, aptly named Tape, and Fab Filters Saturn 2. There's affiliate links down below. These are my favorite tape plugins, but specifically Soft Tube Tape, the two UAD tapes, and Sketch Cassette. Um, if you want to support the channel, please do consider buying these through the affiliate link. If not, I hope you learned something. If you want me to dig into more detail on any of these specific plugins, please do leave a comment below about which ones you want to know more about. So if you want to hear what any of these specific ones sound like, I will have uh, links down below. You can just skip to the part of the video that is most helpful for you. So to start out with, let's just listen to the song. It's very simple. It's kind of a Brit poppy thing without any tape at all and then we will start listening to it with tape and without tape and then we'll dig into the plugins a little bit and then we will actually compare the plugins a little bit more with more like a b type testing so let's hear it unprocessed simple, really straightforward, some strings, some drums, some bass, a piano. There's no EQ, there's no compression, there's no nada. It's just going to be tape that we're hearing. And the first tape we're going to hear is Relight. Um, so what we'll do is we'll um, just play a play a stretch of it unprocessed, well we'll play a stretch processed and then unprocessed and we'll go back and forth once. When it's on this side, it means that it's the processed version with tape. When it's on this side, it's the unprocessed version without tape. So you can just follow along. I'm not going to hit any buttons. I'm just going to automatically flip back and forth. And then we'll talk a little bit about the plugins. So let's go. So we're starting out with Tone Empire's Relight. And we'll hear it unprocessed and then processed. Um, and so one thing I'm going to say is for each of these tapes, they can do a wide, they can by and large do a wide variety of sounds. But what I have done is choose the sound that I think is most characterful and representative of their unique sound. So uh, to me, like this Tone Empire kind of really, uh, or this Relight really works well for kind of like a retro 60s, 70s tape. It definitely brings out that beatlesque vibe it has a um it does something weird to the stereo field where it definitely is collapsing it a bit but it's also adding this kind of crunchy like over the top pleasantly hyped musical quality to the track we'll just loop this part real quick um there are multiple types of tape to choose from multiple high pass and low pass filtering input output to get the saturation set right you can control the bias the comp which is they've uh, sort of separated the compression aspect of the tape from the saturation you can control the amount of crosstalk which will kind of help with the stereo image 
and then we can control the speeds and also do some oversampling. What we're going to do at the very end is hear everything on the master bus and I'll tweak some of the controls a little bit more at that point. Right now we're just going to do the dialed in sound though. So let's listen to Relight just a couple of times on its own. It's just got a very nice, warm, like mid rangey thing. I love how it sounds on the bass and the drums. This is probably not the type of plugin that I might use on every track, but I think it adds a lot of character and could definitely see placing this on bass and drums. Now let's go to Sketch Cassette 2, which is a very characterful plugin. Um, it emulates high well low quality everything from low quality to high quality cassettes that were used to make music back in the day and so on this one i'm using the highest quality the master but uh this really excels at the lower quality stuff too it gets those really gritty like cool tape recordings think you know um nebraska by the boss um any home studio that used to have i have actually done a full-on video uh digging into sketch cassette so if you want to check that out i'll put uh added in the playlist so you can check it out there. I'm also just going to let you know how I have this set up. I had individual instances of the each plugin on every instrument and I gain staged them the right amount so that they would all be hitting where I wanted. Um, so before you think that this is all on the master bus, no, this is sort of the summed results that we're hearing. So let's listen to it unprocessed and then processed. This is Sketch Cassette 2 here. Unprocessed. To me, what I hear with that is sort of the, it's more hyped on the high end, a little sizzly. You hear a little bit of the wobble of the tape there. Um, and there's the snare, like right around 1K, maybe 800 to 1.5K is kind of hyped and really splashy in a nice way. I, I really have enjoyed using this tape for, or this plugin for like tone shaping. Um, I might even use it in combination with other plugins. It does a lot of fun stuff. Um, it is great on guitars. And let's listen to this one more time, just on its own in a loop. I really like what it's doing to the strings too. It's adding kind of this swirling movement to it. I do not like what it's doing to the bass or the piano. Listen for that. It's sort of, they kind of like disappear and it definitely has less frequency, even though the high is hyped. It just seems less complex uh, in terms of frequency. Um, and so let's listen one more time to that. So yeah, the bass sounds kind of feels kind of flabby and blown out, and the piano just seems to be lacking some of its attack. But I love what it's doing on the strings, and arguably I like what it's doing on the drums. Uh, especially on the snare. Next up, we have this recently released type or tape um, by Baby Audio. This is an AI based tape plugin. It does some interesting things. Uh, what I want to point out is, unlike basically, it breaks tape down into its component parts. And so, unlike the other um, plugins, you're kind of, it's not kind of modeling tape, it's more modeling aspects of tape. So you can kind of do drive separate from uh, glue, which would be compression, the way the low end and the high end shape differently. You can b add back in the presence, noise and wear. Whereas on some of the more traditional tapes that we'll see in a second, basically boosting the input creates saturation and glue in a 
interesting way, whereas this, the components are sort of broken out separately. Let's listen to type, unprocessed and then processed a couple times. Like I said, I'm not trying to get the same tape sound on each of these. I'm trying to get the one that I think is most characterful of the um, plugins. When we go to the mastering, we'll do a little more, or the quote unquote mastering. When we go to just, we'll listen to it at the end with each of these plugins on the master bus and we'll kind of dial something in there. Um, this is kind of, I'm trying to show off the drive aspect and the saturation of tape here. Um, I think it drives well. I don't think if you sum buses with drived, driven tape with type, it gives you a good result. The reverb on the drums is acting really kind of weird here. Um, but on individual instruments, it can sound really cool. So let's listen just to it like this. Like, I, it's probably the glue aspect that's bringing out that the room sound of the drums. The bass sounds pretty good to me. The drums and the, I mean, the piano and the strings kind of feel blown out. But as we'll see later, I mean, these are some cool tone shaping tools in here. And um, to me, I think I just wanted to show off that like, the ability to just dial in a drive aspect of tape is interesting because you're not getting necessarily the other stuff you would get with a tape. Whereas if you look at something like UAD's Ampex ATR-102, this is emulating all the controls you would find on a traditional tape player. Um, and you can't dial in drive, you can't dial in compression. You've got a little bit of EQ and wow and flutter and crosstalk, but at the end of the day, um, you're really manipulating a tape signal. Um, and so, here, I just wanted to show you kind of like the traditional tape. Um, also, at the end, I will let you know my favorites, but here we go. If you want to get better at mixing and mastering, I've got a free mastering workshop where I show you exactly how to master your music. And one of the most important steps is running everything through a tape plugin to glue everything together. So be sure to sign up for a free link down below to watch that and learn all there is to learn about mastering. And just a heads up, there are affiliate links down below to purchase these plugins if you're interested. If not, no sweat, but there are some really nice plugins in here. And um, if you're thinking about getting them, if you've been on the fence, it would really help support the channel and help me make more videos like this. So please do consider purchasing through those links down below. Thanks. To me, I think the Ampex adds, if you're listening on good speakers with here, it just adds a lot of weight to the low end. The kick and the bass sound way better with this. Um, let's make these waveforms a little bigger. Um, it still preserves the dynamics really well. And um, what I like is the way it, I don't think it's overly harsh on the low or on the top end. And I think it still pre pre preserves a lot of sense of depth, a space. So let's listen again, just, so, just to the Ampex version. Like this, the stereo image feels really good with this plugin. Um, it, it feels like everything kind of has its space left and right, right and left. What I will note about both this UAD plugin and the next one is that they require the UAD 
hardware to run, which is why they can't be my equivocal favorites because you have to buy a multi hundred dollar piece of hardware to run them. Uh, but this is a great emulation. Let's listen one more time and then we'll turn on the Studer by UAD. Kind of just the way the kick and the bass hit together it sounds really nice with the Ampex. Um, so now let's go to the UAD Studer. Again, this model's a real, real tape decks. You got your input, your output, the speed, type of tape. You can do some hum, some high frequency, some low frequency. Um, so let's listen unprocessed and then processed. To me, that sounds really smooth, really even. It's just adding a touch of glue, a touch of warmth, probably the most like what I would want a tape track to sound like on individual tracks. Um, the depth and the stereo image is still really good. The snare does disappear a little bit. You could bring it out by using the high frequency boost, but like this is pretty much a straightforward, clear, clean tape sound for your tracks it does great things for stereo it does great stuff for harmonic content and for a little bit of glue let's listen to the uad studer by itself the top end sounds really nice the bass sounds really fat and juicy with this uh, the kick and the snare aren't fully there i'm not totally love the way they're sounding on this um again you know i'm not i didn't totally dial in these tracks um the strings and the piano sound pretty good the piano sounds i think quite good the strings um maybe not the top top but pretty good so that's the studer for you now let's go to the Waves J37. We'll listen, as always, um, unprocessed and processed. So this, again, is an emulation of a classic, classic tape deck, I believe. This was at Abbey Road. Could be wrong. Doesn't really matter. Um, traditional set of controls. So let's listen there. So there's a little bit of saturation on the J37, especially on the drums. I think the snare sounds quite pleasant. It's kind of washed out. The kick is a little uh, shattered because of the saturation. Um, I've also got just a loop track, so it's not like I've individually put tape on kick and snare. Um, I don't love what it's doing to the high end, though, on the strings and the piano. It, it feels a little harsh and hyped. Uh, and the bass feels okay, but not fantastic. Let's listen again, though. This is a decent, natural tape sounding plugin as well. So the piano sounds good to me. The piano sounds very good. Um, the drums, it doesn't seem like it's the right sound for this. It's too saturated. There is a separate saturation control. I don't think I really turned it up. I think it just must be coming naturally in through here um the like i said the strings are a little harsh um the piano sounds good the bass sounds fine we'll give it one more quick listen and actually the bass has grown on me a little bit the bass sounds decent on that 
Next up, we have soft tube tape. This plugin is pretty straightforward. Again, emulates a traditional type of tape. You basically have control over three types of tape, the amount of color, which is kind of distortion, the speed, which is kind of the resolution, wet dry, which is really nice, uh, stability, a trim for EQ, and then crosstalk and noise. You can also do speed up and slow down. We'll, we'll get into the actual features of each one in a sec, but we'll listen to it unprocessed and processed. To me, this just sounds really good. It, it just adds that subtle, everything you want to have in a, uh, in a tape plugin. So let's listen again. The kick punches, the bass is round. Uh, the high end is rounded off in a nice way. The piano still has its attack, but it's a little smoother. Let's listen again. And if you disagree with any of these assessments, please let me know in the comments. Maybe a touch too much distortion on the drums. Again, this could all be dialed back, but by and large, I think that's a really nice tape sound. Uh, really balanced. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Fab Filter Saturn. Um, the Saturn's a really cool and kind of unique tool compared to these other ones. Um, it is much more than just a tube or a tape emulator. It's kind of an all around saturator from guitar amps. Uh, you can do per band saturation, so you could just have saturation on the low end or just a main, you know, tube tape on the low end or just on the high end or anywhere you want. There's separate control over dynamics or compression, uh, a little bit of feedback type things, drive. Um, so let's again, listen processed and unprocessed. This is the Fab Filter Saturn II, unprocessed. <laughs> So to me, um, the low end is a little too hyped um, and the rolling off and the sweetening of the high ends isn't really quite there and it doesn't feel quite as glued as I would want it to be. Um, let's listen again. piano sounds nice it's still punchy and warm but the bass and the drums like they're kind of blowing out the low end a little bit in a way that i don't love um whereas especially with like the u88 ampex it's just like oh no we found a whole extra octave down there practically for you guys to live and just be fat and funky um this is pretty good for dynamics so it's keeping things like the groove is sounding nice still the stereo image sounds nice um but the strings also, it doesn't feel like much is happening there. So that is sort of the rundown of all the tape plugins. Now what I'm going to do is play them side by side so you can kind of hear everything together. Um, and you will... What I'll do is I'll open up the channels so you can actually see what's going on here. Um, 
So they'll just play left to right, and you'll hear the, uh, I don't know, six, seven different tape plugins on their own. And what we'll do is we'll open up this mixer so you can kind of see which ones are playing at any given moment. Uh, so let's get started, and we'll probably play the loop through a couple of times. Uh, would love to know which ones you think are the best and why. So please do leave that down below. Um, oops, we don't want to. We don't want to leave Saturn out. Um, okay, so let's go to the mixer, and we'll go left to right here. There you have it. Those are the different tape plugins put side by side, so you can kind of hopefully help inform your tastes about the plugins and how they compare to each other in terms of sound. Um, next, we're going to kind of look at them in terms of features and apply them to the master bus here just to see what happens and kind of dial in some sounds for each of them. In my opinion, in case you're interested, my favorite is the UAD Studer. A800 for all of the tracks uh, as a nice neutral tape plugin, followed by the soft tube tape um, as a nice neutral plugin for all of the tracks. Uh, this, uh, the big caveat is that you have to have UAD hardware to use the UAD Studer A800. So if I didn't have UAD hardware, I would go with the soft tube uh, tape. I would, as you'll hear, I think the Ampex UAD Ampex is the best master bus. Uh, tape plugin of them all and i think sketch cassette gets honorable mention for being pretty darn good for this and just a really cool tonal shaping tool for other things the waves also sounds decent um type and relight you can do some cool things with but i probably would not recommend them when the other plugins are available and fab filter saturn is a really good plugin but i don't think that if you want to buy it principally as a tape plugin, I would recommend it. It's a great saturation plugin all around, but is it um, really like the go-to tape plugin? I, I don't feel that to be the case. I think I would recommend the soft tube one well above the other one, uh, above uh, Saturn. Uh, I also want to note, if you want to grab any of these, plugins these awesome plugins there are affiliate links down below it would really help support the channel if not no skin off of either of our noses hopefully you're learning something about tape right now as we speak so uh what we've got now is we're going to start with the unprocessed 
tra channels again. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up each individual plugin and mess around with some of the controls. I'll talk you through what they got going on for them and what they don't. Um, and we'll kind of try and dial in a good master bus send sound. There are no plugins on these channels now. These are going on dry, no EQ, no compression, no tape on the individual channels anymore. So what I let's talk first about the features. What I like about Relight, high pass and low pass filters, really good. There are uh, six types of tape to mess around with, and we'll listen to those in a second. You've got variable input and output to uh, gain stage properly. You've got bias control here, which will let you kind of control how hard, quiet things hit the tape. Crosstalk for the stereo image, separate control over the compression, and slow and fast tape speeds. So the first thing we'll do is just quickly kind of go through the six types of tape. Um, and then we'll mess around with some of these controls for a few seconds. Things that are missing from this, though, compared to some of the other tape plugins, there is no tape delay, slapback, which some plugins include, and there's no control over noise or any control over like wobble flutter, which can be useful for some tapes. Also, no uh, start or stop, but there is a separate compression uh, knob. So. Let's set crosstalk at 50, 50, which I think is probably where it should be normally. Um, and let's hit play. We'll just try the different types. definitely brings out the low end. So that's Relight. Um, I, I can't say that I love it. Um, it's, it's just not quite doing any things I really want it to do. It does interesting things, but it's hard to get it to get a standard sound. Um, next up is Sketch Cassette, which is, again, much more on the lower level of tape quality, but the master tape in Type 4 is pretty good. We'll listen to the three different types of tape, and then the three different types of cassette, um, and mess around with a little bit with these other things. Just gain stage it right a little bit. Tons of tone shaping fun here. Tape age.
So to me, this is a super versatile sound shaping tool. I use it a lot for sound shaping. I love it. It is definitely one of my favorite plugins. I don't believe it will run in Reason. I think it's VST3, unfortunately. Um, but it's just an awesome plugin. I've done a full video on it. Would, couldn't recommend it enough. If you're going for the pure tape sound, though, it may not be right for you. It, um, and I wouldn't recommend it as my first tape plugin, but as something to have in your arsenal, it's super great. Next up, Type, which uses AI algorithmic um, tape. Oh, I would also just want to say about Sketch Set, it has a lot of the most features of anything. Uh, wow Flutter, Dropouts, Hiss Saturation, Age, different types of saturation, this noise uh, compensation, noise reduction compensation. It does not include um, a start or stop or a delay feature. Um, tape, separate drive, wet dry knob, you can model presence, high and low. It can be a dual or a single head. You can model it whether it's hot or cold, the amount of noise, wear and tear, and glue or compression. We'll start with no drive, keep it all the way wet, um, and we'll just sort of dial in some sounds. Again, uh, no wear does kind of do the wobbly thing and noise does the noise. Um, I like that there's a separate high-low shape here. Uh, we'll get both to around zero. Um, and a separate presence, but there is no uh, delay or anything like that. Um, drive auto gain if you want, but we're going to turn that off just to deal with things separately. That's a pretty good flanging sound. It's a nice tape compression sound, no doubt about that. Presence. That is a nice presence sound. It's very smooth and open, high shape. basically how hard it hits on those frequency ranges. Normal or hot input. Just breaks up really easily. In singular dual mode. things I like about it, I really want to like tape, but I, d I don't find it's often getting me the real tape sounds that I want. It's giving me aspects of it, but it's not really what it, doing what I want a tape to do. Um, the wear sounds really good. The glue sounds really good. Uh, I don't really just, I don't like the saturation and the way it saturates. Um, and it just doesn't really feel like it's doing what I want it to do. Like, I don't, with a lot of the tape plugins, there's, it gives, it evokes a feeling as much as it it's a set of tools, and I just don't think that tape is doing that for me. Now let's go to the UAD Ampex. If you wanted one tape for mastering, this would be the tape. This thing, especially on your master bus, when I master, this is just incredible. It adds heft. Um, basically, you you know get the input and output levels right, add a little noise, turn off while on flutter, turn on, crosstalk. Uh, you can simulate the transformers. You've got EQ here, high and low shelving, bias, crosstalk amounts, wow and flutter, hiss, hum. You've got a tape delay option for delay. Um, you can have them all, if you've got multiple instances, you can sync them up. You have different tape speeds, different tape formulas, different tape sizes. Uh, about the only thing it doesn't do is start and stop. So let's listen to this now.
can also do the nasty stuff. This really does everything I want in a tape, especially on the master bus. It just adds depth, complexity, uh, just the right amount of glue automatically, just the right amount of low end boom. Uh, and you can use it as a delay, all sorts of things. Highly recommend if you have UAD hardware. Um, similarly, the Studer A800 is a fantastic plugin. It'll work great on your master bus, um, but it's even better on the individual tracks. Um, and this is how it would be used back in the day, is that they would record all the, you know, you got an 8-track, a 16-track, it would all be recorded on a studer, and then they would print the uh, stereo mix onto the A800, and they'd cut that onto vinyl. So that's sort of simulating that. This is a pretty simple, straightforward plug-in. Uh, you've got basically a bias, high-frequency and low-frequency boost for input and output, some noise choices, um, which you can turn on or off, uh, four types of tape, three or four-ish tape speeds, some calibration choices, and the input and the output. So it still sounds pretty good on the master bus. I'll just turn it on and off for you. Um, I think it's a, a if you know you could only afford one plugin and you had UAD. I think it would go for this over the A800 just because it's more versatile on the individual tracks. And you can handily close it and just look at it like this. I just like what it does for the snare, for the stereo image. It just sounds nice all the way around. The Waves plugin is also really nice, straightforward, three different types of tape, two speeds. Uh, it doesn't include a 30 ips speed, which is um, kind of unfortunate for like higher fidelity things. A little bit of control over the bias, input and output. You can do delay on it, feedback delay, slap delay, ping pong delay as an insert or a send return, separate controls for wow and flutter, noise level and saturation, and it overall sounds pretty good. Let's listen. Just turn it down a little bit. breaks up really easily um, and at the lowest resolution it gets really low resolution which is fine uh, that's a thing I feel like it doesn't quite do the stereo image any favors um, let's start turning the noise and saturation up a bit There's that. <laughs> you also have the option of which interior or exterior tracks were modeled. Um, so that's kind of the stereo. I, I, thought, I think this sounds better on the individual buses. It, I'm quite unimpressed with it here on the master bus. 
but I thought it worked okay on the individual buses. Next up we have Tape by Softube. This is probably, when it comes to the all around best tape plugin aside from UAD, meaning if you don't have the UAD hardware, this is the one I'd recommend. Um, again, you got the amount of color, three different types of tape player, a bunch of different speeds to choose from, high boost, cross talk, which we'll set at nominal for now, wet dry if you want, speed stability for wobble, noise on and off, and a run and a stop. So let's listen. C sounds better for mastering. Um, just a little bit of this. Um, let's wobble it up. Speed stability is another great thing that could just be used on like, like an organ or the strings or something standalone. We can cut or boost the high frequency. So pretty cool. Um, finally, we have Saturn 2. Right now we're just applying it across the board to the entire um, track, but maybe we'll do a, just a multi-band thing for a second to show you. A lot of different tone controls per band as well. So this is low end, this is high end. Distorted high end, but a uh, Clean low end, but a compressed low end. A few other tape types. So there's a lot you can do with you know fab filter like i suggested with saturn but um for this type of tape application i'm not sure it's the best choice it is a great plugin and i love it a lot uh, but wouldn't recommend it for this so like i said and i'll be sure to make videos on them um, and otherwise i just hope you found this helpful if there's any tape plugins i didn't include um leave a note as well and i'll try and add some new ones thanks so much for watching bye